Um, hi Chantelle, thank you so much for joining my podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Uh, Chantelle is an illustrator and she shares her entire process on YouTube and on Instagram on the Chantelle Arts. And I just really love seeing how open you are about your process, about joining art challenges, about improving as an artist and improving your sketching skills and your drawing skills. And I think this is something that is really relatable to a lot of people who are going through a similar process or maybe, you know, a little bit earlier at the start or wanting to start to draw and they don't really know how to start to look at someone who is going through that process and who um, is really open to share about that. It's so helpful. And I remember when I first started on my art journey that I loved seeing videos of other people uh, creating art to get ideas and to get inspired and I, I still really do I still love seeing other people creating things so yeah thank you so much for for sharing your journey and I'm so curious to find out how you got started with art and what your favorite materials are and where your your vision is of where you're going to go conquer the world uh, in the future all these sort of things so we're, yeah we've got lots to talk about I think so um would you mind just introducing yourself a little bit before we start with our sketching. Yeah, um, well, I'm very happy to be here and I'm really excited to have a conversation with you. Um, my name is Chantal, I go by Chantal Arts on social media and I'm very early on in my journey. It was only last year that I decided I wanted to try and pursue an art career, but I currently share on YouTube, TikTok and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And at the moment it's processes, art challenges. Art challenges are the main one that I really enjoy and just try and share art and encourage other people to try and join them. That's sort of what I'm doing at the moment whilst trying to grow on social media. And um, yeah, I'm still very early on in my art journey, as I said, only just starting like a career. But I think it might be interesting to talk about like differences and how we're both going on and that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I have uh, people on this podcast from all different stages of their careers. And some people are really established and some people are really new to an art career. And I think there's really interesting things to talk about at every stage. And um, there's also there's always people who are earlier in their in their journey than you are who can learn from you. So, yeah, it's I think it's going to be really interesting to so let let me turn my screen around when you can do the same. And then we are going to work on our sketchbooks while yep. we chat today. I always really like seeing these sort of sketchbook views from above. I think it's so much fun. Um, yeah, I love it. I love seeing what people do in their sketchbooks. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what are you going to do today? What are you using for uh, a talk about you? Uh, today I'm using watercolour. I've got some pencil sketches down and I've got a couple of like light fine liner sketches down just so that I have something to follow as we're going along. But I'm just going to be using watercolour really. That's my main medium. What about you? I am using, this is a uh, Seabite of Brighton sketchbook, which I use for my messy sketches. Um, so I usually just either doodle with ink, uh, these were all from reference, but I either doodle with ink or I, um, yeah, sort of sketch in it. But this is not my curated sketchbook, so I'm allowed to make a mess in this. And I'm just going to start with a sketch pencil and I have some other materials here as well, some pens and some other things that I can use. Yeah. And um, oh, I didn't talk about my sketchbook. <laughs> I actually have quite an interesting sketchbook. I'm using the Cardi one, so it's all like um, handmade. It's really quite a cool sketchbook. It looks like it's really beautiful watercolor paper. Yeah, it's um, it's handmade. I, Cardi just doesn't get any recognition, but it's a really good brand. Really nice. I find it quite hard to find uh, good watercolor sketchbooks. To be honest, I think for like yeah. rough sketches and stuff there's lots out there but to find a good watercolor sketchbook that is also not super expensive i find that very difficult <laughs> yeah especially 100 percent cotton ones as well it's just like mm. etcher and 30 pound each you know i am um, i started to make my own sketchbooks a little bit recently because i buy a lot of loose paper and so i have big blocks mm. of paper that i use from art classes and i'm sort of thinking oh i can just make them in, into my own sketchbooks just to have a few stitches and put something around it but i've never really I've, I've done a few small ones, but I want to do more because I think it's just, well, why not? <laughs> yeah, that's a really lovely idea. I've always thought about doing that. Hmm. Um, so is watercolour something that you have used? I'm, I'm just going to start sketching in the meantime. But is watercolour yeah, something yeah. that you have started with? And have you, like, have you always been creative? Is this, tell me a little bit more about how you got started on, on your art journey. Well, um... 
I've always enjoyed watercolor the most, but I found it so difficult to use to begin with, but I still really enjoyed it. So I just kind of stuck with and tried to teach myself how to use it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just something that I've gravitated towards. I've also tried to use gouache, but I found gouache so difficult. Like I still try and use it, but it's, I just found it really difficult to use. But I think the thing that I've liked the best about watercolor is just that you can reactivate it. Mm. I'd used acrylics and you know, you have to work so fast with acrylics before it dries. And I just, I felt like I was wasting paint if I didn't use it all up. Yeah. And I think watercolour is just really good in that sense. I agree. I've got into colour pencils a little bit more. Um, but I've never tried markers. That's something that I haven't tried. I am, um, well, a lot of these materials combine really well with each other as well, which I think is a lot of fun to do. I love yeah. Um, sort of adding a watercolor layer and then adding some details with mark or going over it with color pencils and then yeah, building up layers with different colors. Um yeah, mm. I, I really enjoy that using a bit of a bit of everything. So um do you remember the first time you used watercolors? Um well I think I did use it as a child, but the first time I properly used it was I got this um Windsor and Newton Cotman like little travel set mm-hmm. and I think my dad picked it up on sale for about five pound which I'm sure it's definitely not nowadays but I really loved that one and it had a few weird shades in there but there was like Alizarin and Crimson, Viridian I think I still have it and that's kind of what really got me into watercolors. The Windsor and Newton paint is so good and it's so like cheap in Britain really isn't it? Mm. considering how good it is I agree it's so easy to find as well I really think when you're starting out you don't need to have professional materials I think when you I don't know if you agree with this but I think just using any materials and just getting just enjoying it you don't really need to buy the most expensive thing because sometimes it can be a bit scary then to actually use it Um, yeah and also like I also found as well, if you, um, like, I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos to try and figure out what kind of supplies were the best and what everyone else was using. But really, it kind of depends on what country you're in, because whatever's cheapest in your country would will work absolutely fine. And, you know, for us, it's something like Windsor and Newton. But it it's really hard to decide, like, which one could be the best, because, you know, it's cheaper in different countries, and it's always going to be a factor. Mm, absolutely. And do you um and um, do you work mostly in your sketchbook or how what what is your what are you other mediums what do you use? Yeah, mostly sketchbook. I did a lot of loose kind of watercolor paintings. Um, and then I got a sketchbook, and then I worked solely in a sketchbook, and it was kind of hard to break out of that. To be honest, uh, um, I got a little bit. I feel like that's quite a common thing when you work in a sketchbook. It sort of is hard to go back to loose paper because it feels a bit more difficult, like you're creating something proper, so it's a bit more um, like pressure to make it good. Really? But I'm definitely enjoying my sketchbooks at the moment. Um, Do you work a lot in sketchbooks? I I think that's really interesting, because I find that working with sketchbook, there's more pressure than on loose paper for me. Because really? if I work on loose paper, I can just discard that one paper and keep the ones that I like or there's much more freedom in sort of turning over um, yeah sort of quicker and when you put something in a sketchbook it's in that sketchbook forever so if you go through it and there's a piece of art that is you know quote unquote bad art or something that I don't like then it's it's sort of solidified in that sketchbook so that I find it much more scary to work in a sketchbook and I'm trying to let go of that by having a messy sketchbook and just you know, I make so many drawings nowadays that I don't really mind having a piece of art that I'm not happy with. Um, but yeah. when I first started, I uh, yeah, that was terrifying to mess up your sketchbook. <laughs> um, especially That's really interesting. Artists, especially in YouTube, there's so many artists who have these beautiful curated sketchbooks that are just like pieces of art in themselves. Um, yeah, so I felt like that was something that I had to create. But, um, yeah, so it's I think the way you view it is more how a, tradi- how a sketchbook should be a place to experiment. Mm. Well, I sort of see it like if you don't like it, you just close the page and you don't have to see it. 
Mm. So it's like a lot less pressure. Whereas especially, I think when you start having like good quality loose paper, like arches, I do feel a lot of paper pressure on my archer's paper yeah. because it's so good and it's expensive you know i i agree with that i think archer's paper is beautiful but it is it is expensive and the pressure sort of goes up because of that um i work quite a lot on uh booking for the paper and i buy it loose and it's i think it's quality is quite good and it's quite affordable so i think for an a3 sheet it's like 60 feet for a big sheet of paper um arches mm. is much more than that i don't really know what arches goes yeah and i know i get it in blocks as well ones, but I, I cut my my paper in smaller pieces as well and then uh yeah no, I, yeah it's, it's interesting everyone has a different different way of doing it you know yeah i really need to do that buying the big sheets and cutting them up i don't really have much space mm. but the blocks are quite expensive the arched blocks mm. do you because it looks like you paint or draw every single day. Is that is that uh, just how it appears on, on social media, or are you really painting every day? No, I um I repost a lot of my stuff. I mean, sometimes I generally go through sessions. So, like for my YouTube, um, I will kind of paint my nails, get everything set up, and then record a few mm -hmm. videos for a few days, and that kind of does me for like the month. Um. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, especially on TikTok and especially with like Instagram reels as well, you know, trying to keep up with the algorithm. It's like you have to be posting a lot. Mm. Um, so I do understand with social media why it looks like, you know, people are creating every single day. But it's really hard to kind of keep up with the algorithm, I find. Yeah. I don't when know about do, you. When you do an, um, uh, a challenge like what you did last month with the, the robot themed challenge. Do you do you prepare yeah. things then in advance to uh, keep up with that? Because I find doing something every um, day for a month is very intense. It seems easy, but it's hard to keep that up. Yeah, it definitely is. I I planned to start earlier. That was my plan, and um, I actually got tonsillitis. So usually I like to start an art challenge like a week earlier, ideally, just so that you know you're a little bit ahead for like social media, and mm. you can. Um, you know, if you want to take a break, you can take a break. You can do two a day. But I got tonsillitis, so I wasn't able to start it until, like, the very first day. So when it came to that one, I did have to um, try and do, like, two or three a day. Some days I think I did four hmm. just to try and get ahead. So, yeah, I don't tend to do it, like, daily on the day. But a lot of that is just for social media and to be able to post hmm. on time. I think a lot of people do it that way. If I do an art challenge that is a month, I try to work ahead a little bit. And then if you miss a few days for whatever reason, then you have some sort of in the bank that you can that you can post. You have a little bit of leeway. But even when you do that, because that that sort of cheating again between sort of uh, between little marks, you need to do that because even then it is so easy that something happens and you cannot make something for a couple of days and then you're behind and. It is, yeah, that, that sort of pressure of doing a challenge for a month. I think it's a fantastic way of getting into making a habit out of art. But it is also um, quite draining. I'm, I don't really have the time for many art challenges at the moment, unfortunately. But I think it's such a good way of, uh, yeah, making art a habit and learning. Yeah, um, so I'm planning at the moment on doing my MA. Depending on when I could start, I've wanted to do my May since last year, really, but I found out about it a little bit too late. I've never painted a mermaid before, so I might hate it, but I want to give it a go. Um, you drop yeah, quite a lot of things. I like trying different things. Yeah, I so I'd never drawn a person before, like drawn, painted anything. And um, I literally just tried it last year. I was like, you know, I've never tried portraits. And I I painted my first portrait and I was like, oh, yeah, I like this. <laughs> and um, since then, I have just focused on portraits, really. I think I painted a lot of landscapes because, you know, that's kind of what you're sort of pushed towards in school to do landscapes, to do realism. But I do really like doing portraits. Hmm. Um, but unfortunately, because of that, I've got like not very much practice in it because I hadn't actually done it until recently. 
Sorry, it was a child side. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a little bit if of you a, that. I think there's a little bit of a lack at the moment, but it's okay. I don't think well I'll I'll check the recording to see how much I need to cut out, but it's uh I think it's okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I think it was just that once the internet went a bit weird. Hmm. I think um I talked over you a few times because it, it was quiet and then suddenly I think there's because there's a little bit of a delay, but it's that's okay. Your colors are beautiful. I love the yeah. uh, the colors of the uh, what the earth. I'm assuming that is with the the water, the ocean. It's beautiful. Yeah, I do really love this paper. To be honest, I've noticed it does like really soft blurs. Even if you drop water in it, it won't do blooms. It will always make it blend. Mm. Which is just a kind of different way of working. But I found it really interesting. Mm. The um, I've not. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm just I was just gonna say I've not tried any other paper. Um I'm really curious on how you um why you sort of decided to pick up that brush last year and started to share your art and um was this all during lockdown or after that or how, how did that come to be? So um yeah, so I didn't actually pursue art as a career or at university or anything. I um I got a biology degree and I worked as a scientist and then COVID hit and it you know, I was I was a key worker and it was the workload was crazy and that affected my mental health. So when my mental health got really poor, I picked up my paints that had been in the box since high school and just started painting again and that's kind of where it came from it was like as a way to help my mental health mm. and you know I'd I'd been speaking to professionals and they'd said like um you know what do you do what hobbies to try and like help and I said that I did painting and everyone was encouraging me to keep painting and that's kind of where that came from really mm. and um do you come from an artistic family or be not at all no, not at all really. It wasn't it wasn't something that I was taught that I could like pursue as a career. Mm -hmm. Um so it was something that I hadn't really considered before. And, unfortunately. Um, and now, but are you are you hoping to make this into your full time career or are you thinking about yeah. plans with, with art coming forward? I think for me I would definitely like to focus on like growing my social media as opposed to being um like a local artist and in galleries I would much rather try and grow my social media that's kind of the route that I'd like to take mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to move and have my career kind of follow me mm -hmm. um so I think social media is very good in that kind of sense mm. yeah so that's sort of the route that I'm taking present. currently yeah I mean I would I'd like to move out the country so I'd like something that I can take with me. Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, it's perfect for that. The, um, I think, well, a lot of people, especially if you work digital, I think that makes it even easier. Because when you travel, you have to take all your paints and your pencils and everything with you. It becomes a little bit harder. Uh, but even then, like, you can do this anywhere in the world, right? And if you make a living on, on YouTube and sharing things online and... Come back, come on. Come back, come back. There we go. Um, yeah you can do that from anywhere so yeah there's there's a lot of people that I know who do that and it's just yeah wonderful I think wonderful opportunities that come out of them um, yeah I think YouTube is obviously you know we're both trying to work on growing our channels it's definitely an interesting platform hmm. but I think it's it's you know it's a slow platform it will take a long while hmm. it's not going to be overnight growth no, I think maybe for some people it happens overnight, but I think in general it is quite an, uh, yeah, it's something that you need to invest time in and energy into to do it right as well. But I think um, for me, I don't know how it is for you, because you're um, really active on Instagram and on TikTok as well. I find YouTube much calmer for me to do than Instagram and TikTok, where mm. you constantly have to create content. Um, how do you find that? Yeah, I find, well, I've had a few issues lately. So on Instagram, um, 
I started doing the scheduled posts, scheduled reels, and that seemed great. But then I noticed my views were dropping because if you schedule them, it doesn't share it to Facebook. So I didn't notice that. And then I also had issues with YouTube as well, where I was like ahead of the game. I had lots of stuff scheduled and... Um, I use Fomatic where you have to like reference the music in the caption mm -hmm. and um had a load of issues with that because apparently with YouTube if you have your video scheduled for a long while it stops recognizing the caption so if you reference music in the caption you get a copyright claim for it because it stops really? recognizing it oh, um, that. so that was interesting but but yeah usually like I have them scheduled and it's completely fine um, I think TikTok does require probably the most for me um I don't think you have TikTok did you I do but I don't really use it I think I have two followers um or something I don't know <laughs> I have posted a few things on TikTok but I think there's so many social media channels out there um mm. and and also depending a bit on who the audience is that you want to create like what you want to do um yeah for me TikTok is not really a target place to be um, so I have an account. But I just I just don't really understand it. <laughs> I'm too old for this, I think. Um, yeah, TikTok is the most demanding because you do need to post multiple times a day. The, um, Whereas YouTube is a lot less, I feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for me, like even Instagram is not really a target uh, social media. I am um, I really like it to connect with other illustrators. And to um, yeah to talk to people because people are quite approachable like you know I can send you a message and like, things like that really easily. But as mm -hmm. a way of marketing my business, I don't really use it for that. It's more of an you know a portfolio sort of place where people can see some of your work and a place to make connections for me personally. And um, so the whole fact that people don't really see my post if I share something or how many views I get doesn't really bother me so much anymore. It used to more um yeah but yeah it depends a lot on what you want to do in terms of illustration i think where you need to be and where you need to showcase your work otherwise um yeah you spend a lot of energy in creating things that you know might not necessarily get you what you want to get out of it do you do you find yeah. it scary or did you used to find it scary to share your work online yeah i definitely used to i think i'd kind of i'd been painting for about two years before I started sharing it online and it was like a big thing hmm. but when I shared like that first post and people actually commented on it and said that they liked it I feel like that was kind of hmm. that gave me the boost to sort of share other ones and also like the art community online is just so kind you know the only reason like in my experience the only way that I've encouraged people that encounter people that aren't are when it gets shared further than the art community hmm. But generally, like everyone in the art community is so lovely that mm. it doesn't really bother me when I share it online, and mm. you know I don't really encounter that too much. I am, um, yeah, I agree with that. I think when you're not used to sharing your work, sometimes it can be scary because you feel like people might judge what you make, or like, oh, it's not good enough, or you know, they they look at it with a judgy eye. But in reality. People usually like, well, what I have experienced is that people are usually much kinder than I am to myself. <laughs> and that's, mm. um, yeah, it can be really motivating to get positive feedback or to, you know, to share your work and have people look at it. So it for me, it's been a positive experience. But before I did it, it was quite scary. But mm. that's, uh, and yeah, yeah, and I agree. Like, I think the whole sort of experience of getting trolls or people being horrible to you online I luckily have never had that. I hope, fingers crossed, it will sort of stay away from me as well. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, really I've never encountered that. But I do feel like, I feel the art community as a whole is just so supportive compared mm. to, you know, a lot of social media. I agree. And um, as you, um, you're, you've got really big, Instagram accounts, at least I think it is really big. Um, do you um, yeah, do you put a lot of work into that, into curating it and talking to people online? And like how, how do you find that? Um, I mean, a lot of my Instagram growth was really years ago. 
um when I was young I did actually post some of my art like when I was in school years ago um so some of the growth is from then and then I've just kind of picked up the account recently and started posting my art on there again Mm. but yeah I definitely started on TikTok was the first place I posted my art and then I decided to post on Instagram but I do feel like TikTok is a lot more relaxing really than Instagram because you know it can be you can compare your artwork to other people quite easily on there Mm. interesting so I'm just doing lots of hatching at the moment I sort of have a plan with my drawing but not um it is sort of coming out a little bit different from what I originally planned (laughs) this usually happens to me the, um, I'm trying to figure out what colour a deer is. <laughs> what colour is a deer? Brown. Brown. Yeah. Brown. I think you can make you can make it any colour. The um. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the beautiful thing about art. You can really interpret things in your own way, and that things don't always have to be realistic. Because if you wanted something hyper realistic, you could use a photo, right? Um, there's something about yeah, yeah. art where you can change things and change colours or proportions or things i love the tiger i think it looks fantastic yeah thank you i was also struggling with color for that one i was like is a tiger yellow or orange (laughs) it's like i don't realize how much i'm sort of looking at reference photos as i go until i don't Hmm. i don't um, really paint animals though do you not no you do a lot of portraits no yeah Yeah, i don't know why i think animals are actually really quite difficult i think I am. Um, do you use a lot of reference photos when you do when you do your art? Um, I usually try to. I try to have it next to me on my iPad, and then I forget to look at it. I, I do usually look at it like before I get started, and mean to look at them, and then I sort of forget as I go. Hmm. Do you look at a lot of references? I um. It really depends. I'm trying to paint and draw more from life if I can uh, which is quite hard sometimes because there's only so many places you can go sort of physically to see things right like if you wanted to draw tigers we well, could go to the zoo I guess but there's um yeah there's only so many places you could go but I really love painting outdoors and sort of sitting somewhere in nature and painting more so that was my resolution for last year to do more of that and I have I have done that more I go to a museum and draw there but mm. We have access to, I don't think there's anything wrong with using reference photos. We have this amazing library on the internet with all these images that we can use and learn from and draw from. And why would we limit ourselves and think that we should do everything from our imagination? There's, yeah, I I don't think there's anything wrong with using references if you use them in the right way. um, Yeah, I do struggle sometimes with the free sites. Um, Pixabay is the one that I use the most, but... Mm. Sometimes for portraits, especially, they are very kind of posed. I think sometimes it's like you have to create your own reference photos because a lot of the free sites mm-hmm. don't really have natural portraits that you can use. This is this is true. There's a few websites um, where you have sort of the one is called Quick Poses. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Um, and there's a few more oh. sort of free websites where you have lots of reference photos of pictures, and you can choose it, the pictures up for two minutes or five minutes or. You can pause it as well if you want it for really long. And that's really great for like sort of simulating as if you're live drawing um, somewhere. And mm. the people are much more diverse than uh, I think on the free websites, there's a lot of models there that, and I mean, it's in the nicest way possible, but the photos are just a bit blend. <laughs> and I yeah. like on people with, you know, wrinkles and and expressions and smiles and not just like, really sort of perfect post um mm-hmm. yeah so it is hard sometimes but uh i think do you use pinterest for reference photos yeah for a lot of my faces i just feel like they're a lot more interesting like mm-hmm. you say i did also use line of action where i set it up for like three minutes and mm-hmm. try and draw a face or a body as quick as i can but a lot of the time you do end up with the same models they do get mm. repeated so i do feel like pinterest is probably the best for faces yeah this is true um and i do 
even like sketching people sort of in cafes and stuff. But I I feel a bit shy sometimes drawing people there. I feel a bit self-conscious of like, oh, maybe they don't like it. Or um, yeah, I do it sometimes when there's a good spot hidden away a bit. Have you ever tried that? Yeah. I do. I've done a lot of plein air outside for like landscapes, but I don't know. I tried to do it a few times. I've tried to do it um, like on a train and I'm sort of so slow that people end up looking and then I get really shy. Mm. So I haven't really done people like when I'm out and about, mm. um, but I do really like painting landscapes. I should do people more often, but I feel like you have to be really fast and mm. not make eye contact. And it's just a little bit. You know, it's, it's easier to do landscapes. Hmm. But at least it doesn't walk away or uh, changes too quickly. <laughs> it's true. True, true. Yeah. yeah, I really like beaches. I find them so relaxing. And that's where I like doing a lot of landscapes. Really? Are you close to any beaches? Yeah, I'm, that's kind of all I'm around, really. Um, I have tons of beaches near me. They're nice as well because they're like bays rather than um, where I used to live where it would just be like literally 20 kilometers of beach. These are like really nice bays. They're really nice to paint. Mm -hmm. And I like listening to the sea as well whilst I'm painting. I just find it really relaxing. Mm -hmm. I feel like I should visit you and we should go do lots of painting on the beach. <laughs> it sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I used to actually live near you, but I've travelled so far away now. Hmm. Do you, um, like, so I, I'm not too far from London. Is that is that an area you grew up in? Uh, um, no, I, I'm as, I was a bit further into East Anglia, near into Norwich. Hmm. But it's closer than currently. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of the country. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I've always kind of lived near the sea, to be honest. Hmm. I feel I am, like in Britain it's quite hard to get away from it. I saw, I think it might have been the new David Attenborough documentary, but I saw something on TV the other day where they said in any point of Britain, you're never more than 70 miles away from the sea, like even in the sort of very most middle, it's only 70 miles from the from the coast, um, because it's so narrow. Yeah. And, um, yeah, which I think is interesting. I, I love nature here. I think there's so much to see and so much to explore and... I, uh, I grew up in the Netherlands and I think we have a lot of nature mm. in Holland, but it's much more like farmer fields and stuff. And here there's much more sort of slightly wilder areas, which I really love. Yeah. yeah. What kind of nature did you get there then? But I always grew up in the city. So where I live now is the smallest town I've ever lived in and it's still 40,000 people or something. Um, mm. So I grew up in Rotterdam, which is a big town in Holland, a big city. And uh, then I've yeah. lived, uh, yeah, I've lived in other cities in Holland as well, but then I moved to London. Um, yeah, so whenever I go to nature, it's like a conscious effort to go out, to uh, to leave the city and go into nature. That's how it's always been. Hmm. I, uh, I love Do you like living in, in the city then? Sorry? What did you say, sir? Sorry, I think we've gone. Yeah, I think it's doing that thing again. Um, I asked if you liked living in the city. I I did, I do. Um, and I always thought I would forever stay in cities. I was like, oh, I'm this city person, and I love you know the theater and nightlife and all these things. Um, but since I moved away, I've not missed it at all, and I actually really like being in nature. So. I, uh, I have changed the... Uh, because you can always go back to the city for a day or for a weekend, but it's nice to have nature around you all the time. I, yeah, I prefer that, personally. Yeah. Now. That's true. How about you? Um, I've always kind of lived in the countryside. I lived in a city when I went to university, and I did really enjoy it, but I do like the kind of slow-paced country living. Mm. But then I do like how when you live in a city, you just have so much around you. There's always things you can do. Whereas where I live, it's kind of like if the weather's not good, there's not really much you can do. Hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately. I guess that's true. 
the um yeah home. it's very based on the weather we have this saying where we say there's no bad weather just bad clothes <laughs> but then you don't really want to go like okay. with a big sort of um you know your big sort of rain hats and everything just to sit outside in the uh, in reality yeah Especially like painting outside lately. Like I haven't painted outside since I think I've only done it once this year, but it's literally been raining every single day. Mm -hmm. And it's like painting outside, you just you can't you can wrap up as much as you like, but you can't really avoid the rain if you paint with watercolour. No. The um I run an uh, urban sketching group with some people around here where I live. And uh, we sort of come together, it's free, everyone brings their own materials. And it's a really nice way of going somewhere and just draw one of the buildings. Or There's a lot of really nice old buildings around here that are interesting to sketch. Hmm. Uh, but last, uh, earlier this month, actually, I should say, last time, we all came together and it started to rain. And uh, you're standing there, your watercolour just blurs out and there's splashes of water in your paper. But it's just impossible. <laughs> you can stay for half an hour. Yeah. It's a good way to really loosen up your artwork. Just standing in the rain. Um, yeah, I've been there before. I've got one that's got like water drops all over it. You can literally see where the rain's landed. Yeah. It is quite fun for half an hour, and you're like, no, we have to go now. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do if it's literally just the layers are not drying and the rain's dripping on it. There's kind of nothing you can do. Are you selling any like prints of your work or are you planning to do so or running a shop or like what's what is your um, sort of vision for going going forward with your art if you do it like I have considered it I'm I don't know I've looked into it before and I feel like I'm not too sure because I don't necessarily um want to start on Etsy mm -hmm. you know with all of the fees and everything I don't think it's a great place to start out in this day and age um i considered prints but i've kind of looked up prices and everything and it's kind of yeah i sort of back away from it every time just because of the cost really and mm -hmm. you know whether you're able to actually sell them and make it successful and also postage and shipping and customs mm -hmm. it's all very confusing so that's kind of the thing that's um, put me off so far. But I have looked into it and I have purchased from Sticker App before and I really like their stickers. I also considered like a printer, but that was also quite pricey. So at the moment I'm just kind of not, but I'm thinking about doing a Patreon in future. Mm. I think that's kind of the route I would take rather than like a full um, small business kind of shop. Mm. The... Um... I think running a um, print shop, I know some of my friends, they sell quite a lot of their art prints uh, really successfully, but it's so much work. And for me personally, I, I started to do this maybe three years ago or something where I thought, oh, it's a really good idea. And I bought a printer and I set everything up so I can make my own art prints at home and stickers and stuff. But it's just so much work. And I know that sounds maybe a bit lazy but you have to focus on certain things and where you put your energy into is what you get most out of and then I thought I can sell like loads and loads of postcards that I print at home that is lots of work for like two pounds each or I can do a commission mm -hmm. for a client where I get 300 pounds <laughs> and I spend probably the same amount of time on it um, so yeah it's really it's interesting I think it is really lovely to have people love your art and then buying it and hanging it on their wall either because it's original art or because it's prints but the fact that people buy your art is really special but the creating of it is very um time consuming and expensive and uh, yes yeah, so i've i've completely mm -hmm. stopped that side uh, but it's something that a lot of illustrators do sort of when they first start out is that sort of the next step is often creating prints of their work i think and, yeah, um, this is just me and a bit of a uh, ramble. <laughs> for <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I think if you were going to do the small business route and sell prints and stickers, that would then be the entire job, really. Hmm. Um, you would you'd have had like you'd have no time to do commissions. You couldn't edit YouTube videos. 
and I think it's just kind of where you want to focus your energy really and I think for me I would much rather focus on growing my YouTube channel and doing commissions than you know trying to sell and package and post Mm. and that's spend your time doing that really yeah and there's always the worry at least that's what I had there's always the worry that something doesn't arrive right and that you have to resend it or that you get a complaint because you know the mail has messed up somehow or I don't know I just find the whole process quite stressful um more than I do mm. dealing with professional clients um yeah especially with like the postage and everything like that mm-hmm. I looked into it before and it was um all to do with the customs declaration that's just it's so mm-hmm confusing and it's quite a lot of hassle and I'd only really want to do it for commissions I think rather than for all of lots of prints yeah and then do you because you said you worked as a scientist are you doing that again or still or um no I am yeah I kind of left that that was that was about the similar time that um, my mental health got really bad and it was it was kind of to do with that really that I was focusing on art instead and seeing where that took me Mm -hmm. Um, I did like enjoy that I just don't think the kind of high pressure high workload sort of situation is very good for me and you know how I want to work and I feel like that's the kind of thing that you're not really taught in school is what's expected of you in the workplace and whether your mental health can handle such a kind of situation Mm -hmm. No, I agree. So, yeah, at the moment, um, not really. I don't think I was really suited for that, but I do still really like science. Hmm. Um, I think it's true, and I think there's also that you have to choose what direction you want to go into really young. Um, I I don't know how old you are. I think you might be a little bit younger than me. I'm 37 now. Um, But when you're, like, 16, you don't know what you want to do and what you want to be when you're an adult and what you want to like what you're good at and you're so you're discovering yourself still like in so many different ways that I feel like you have to choose your direction I think it's in England even younger than in the Netherlands because we sort of choose when we're 18 or 19 yeah you have no idea what you want to do for the rest of your life and also the idea that you have to choose one career path and then that's it for the rest of your life that is a bit outdated I think yeah yeah no, it is crazy because, um, so you, you have to choose, when did I choose? When I was like 14, 15, I chose the GCSEs I did. Mm-hmm. And then those GCSEs, you do decide what you do in A-level. And it's like, if you don't choose the right GCSEs to do, or you don't get the right grades, it really just kind of stops you from being able to pursue your career at all. And it's mm-hmm. at such a young age, and it's like, you don't really know what you want to do at 16 I mean I didn't hmm. do you think you at some point might combine art with your because you said you study biology right yeah do you reckon that sort of nature um yeah that sort of scientific nature sort of background will sort of come back into your art at some point or is that something that you get inspiration of? I did I did consider something like that because um I don't know, I thought about it recently because when I was doing um, a lot of my uni exams, like we had to draw a lot of like diagrams and, um, you know, like the immune response and viruses and we had to draw a lot of the processes. And I was thinking, like, I wonder if I could do paint part of that to kind of combine mm-hmm. what I like from science with art. Like, I wonder if there's, that's something that I could possibly pursue. I don't know. I think that would just be a side kind of project, but I did actually think about that quite recently. Mm-hmm. It could be quite interesting to try and combine both. Yeah. But it is quite a big sort of niche within illustration. It's uh, like sort of scientific illustrations and like for, for universities and PhDs and things like that. There's a lot of, there's people who specialize in that. So it's quite an interesting thought maybe as a little, yeah. Is that your background? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ways to go with art, with illustration. Mm. I do also really enjoy filming and editing videos, though. Mm. And I do feel like that's one of, like, 
the things you can do with YouTube is just if you really enjoy filming, it can be a really fun process mm. and editing as well. Um, yeah, it's right. I feel like I've learned so much by doing YouTube videos and editing videos and stuff because there's much more that's come. Like it's quite difficult, isn't it, when you first start and then slowly you figure out all these different programs mm. and um, yeah, and the storytelling yeah. as well. I think that's something that you do really well is making a story in your videos. Is that something that you've that you've practiced like on purpose? Yeah, I um I've kind of changed my editing and my filming style recently. I got Premiere Pro, mm -hmm. um, Adobe, which is Adobe, and before that I was using like free software, and yeah, that's really made all the difference. There's so much more that you can do with the bare software. There's so many more different ways to edit, and something like storytelling or having intros, like I wouldn't have been able to do that with the previous software, and there's a lot more that I can do now with with the better Adobe software. Hmm. Interesting. I'm still using... What software um, do you use? I still use um, iMovie. So that's the free Apple uh, video editing software. And I also use the Vinci mm. Resolve, which is also free, um, which I think is quite good. Yeah. It's complicated. There's a lot of different functions that it has. Um, but because I edit sometimes like free videos a day, because I run courses and stuff as well, I don't always need mm -hmm. lots of capabilities. I just need to do it sort of in quite a quick way. Um, yeah, so iMovie works quite well for me, unless I need to I, format yeah. smaller videos. But yeah, the um... I had started on iMovie, but um, I have a Windows computer. Oh. So my very first video was edited on my phone on iMovie, and um, that was definitely an experience. Mm. It's interesting when you watch old things back that you've created, isn't it? Where you think, oh, I've learned so much now. I uh, always quite like seeing seeing things again that I made a little while ago. Sometimes yeah. it's very cringe. I mean, <laughs> need to embrace the cringe. True, true. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of a lot of my older videos. Mm -hmm. so, I'm, I'm quite enjoying it. I'm just doing lots of hatching. I've not really used these pens before, um, these fine liners, but they, um, yeah, it's quite fun to do. I, I haven't really used fine liner like that. Um, I saw someone on, on Instagram. So I'd, I'd really love getting inspiration off Instagram. And she had a whole sketchbook where she only made art in this way. And I thought, oh, I'm going to try that. And I have lots of fine liners. So, um, yeah, not necessarily. Like I'm not copying her work or anything. I just oh, I feel inspired to use fine liners when I saw that, and I this is why because I, I don't really yeah. use it like this either. But I love trying new materials, new new art materials. Um, What's the main materials that you'd say you'd use then? Um, it's it really goes a bit sort of through stages where I really use something a lot so recently i um have been doing so because i run my courses i can sort of build the course that i run around the material that i really enjoy using in that time so recently i've been doing lots of watercolors um and then make courses out of it as well and then share lots of watercolor art online before that i did maybe three months where all my courses were color pencil so i did lots of color pencil drawings at that time so i usually um and my camera will come with me the lens of my DSLR does that sometimes the um yes yeah, so it really depends sort of per stage but I have lots I recently bought lots of markers I bought some new watercolors I love using different different materials and I bought these um these intense blocks recently I've not really tried those yet so I want to start using those more they're like um water soluble crayons but they when they dry up, it's ink, so they're waterproof, so you can then draw and paint over it. Um, yeah, so I, I just use whatever materials I can get my hands on, really. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I find it really hard to build one style of art and build a portfolio of art in one specific style. It's something that I've always struggled with. Uh, how um How is that for you? Do you feel like you have a specific style? Or 
no <laughs> no I I don't have a style I'm definitely working and I think part of trying to figure out a style is kind of what medium do you like what subject do you like to paint and in that sense like it's watercolor and it's portraits but I feel like I don't have that thing where you can look at my work and tell that it's mine and tell that it looks like other pieces I don't have a set art style it's kind of been a while I know everyone says like the more you paint you'll just find it but it's been a while <laughs> hmm. don't seem to be finding it it's um I think it really depends on why do you feel like you need a specific style. I know it's a really big theme sort of in the art community and there's a lot of videos about how you find your style. And it all depends on like, why do you feel like you need to have a specific style? And I, I actually think that you have quite a clear style. I, I think there's, an, yeah, the way you sort of layer your paint and the way you sort of sketch out the outface and stuff. I feel like there is really a theme or like a style there personally. Um, I have I have heard it before, but you know, and it's like I think you just don't see it yourself. Mm. I think it's hard, yeah, to see it yourself. That seems to be a common thing. I think, mm. and I think having a really specific style can be a really good sort of way of marketing art. Like if you if you have a really clear style in your portfolio, then clients know really well what you do and what to pick you for. But it also limits you because it means that it's really hard to do something outside of that style and to sell that to clients because then they're like, oh, well, you don't, this is not what I thought you did. Um, so yeah. flexibility, I think, is good. It, it just depends what, what you prefer. I love trying new things and switching things up. So I would not want to limit myself yeah. to only one medium or only one color scheme or something like that. I don't know. I feel like I. Yeah, I'd like to use loads of different mediums, like you say, and be able to have fun and try different stuff. But I feel like there are a lot of people where even when they switch mediums, it still looks like their art style. Hmm. And I don't think I have that. Um, but then these might be people that are making art for 20 years or longer. Um, yeah, I feel like... Someone's been practicing for, right? No, and I do feel like even though I'd done a little bit in school, like some people have been, you know, painting since they were a child, like nonstop, and you don't really realize how many years people have been creating for. Hmm. Well, this is true. Um, I personally had a really big gap in my making art sort of after high school and until maybe uh, six years ago or something. Um. Where I, I had a sketchbook and I had some art materials lying around, but I almost never used it. And I was just too busy doing other things in my life. And yeah, I didn't create any art. And now I sort of feel like I've wasted a lot of time where I could have been practicing. I probably would have been much better at drawing if I had, you know, kept sketching every day in that mm. time. But sometimes life just takes you in a different path and you, yeah, that's also okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I did wonder that because obviously I'd started painting in school, but then just stopped for like 10 years. Hmm. So I do feel like, you know, the people that have been carrying on have been doing it for like 10 years. Whereas, you know, if you've only just recently picked it up, it does really take time to try and find a style that you like and find your footing really. And even like hmm. understand the medium. Um, sometimes things just go a certain way for a reason and then I'd there's no, there's no point in regretting that. So I do think that sometimes about myself, like, oh, if I just spend every day drawing. And um, do you practice specific skills, um, like consciously, if you, in your art, if you think um, like, oh, I want to get better at something specific, do you practice that? Yeah, I suppose at the moment I've been doing a lot of, um, like postures and human body practice. Mm -hmm. and yeah that's been really difficult but I did a lot of the line of action like um drawing a person in like one minute kind of things where you just keep mm -hmm. going and keep drawing the next person um with faces I did the hundred heads challenge but I just kind of kept painting people that's kind of all I did I just kept painting and sketching them mm -hmm. um but yeah I'm actively trying with postures in the human body but I feel like that one is 
it's definitely difficult I don't know if you've had much experience with that um I so something that I am practicing is to have more movement in my drawing sort of in general instead of just having someone stand still sort of straight from the front to have them do an activity um mm. and but I'm not necessarily practicing on realism so that might be a little bit different but something that I do quite a lot for example is just draw with a brush pen like what I did here for the fish and let me just find a page with some people yeah so I look at some photos from Pinterest and just sketch them out really quickly just in pen without making a sketch um and I feel like the mm. more often you do that the easier it gets to get the proportions right and the gestures right because I know that the proportions are still a bit off here um but I just find it a really fun way of quickly quickly practicing and then the more you do it there's another picture another uh, page with people yeah there's really like only spend like a minute on each drawing I find that a really good way of practicing it yeah I feel like you've got really confidence line works hmm. That's one thing that I struggle with. I try and do confident line work and feel like it just looks a bit messy. But the, the thing is, if you use a big pen like this, because these are quite chunky markers, you have to be confident because otherwise that's the only way that line is going to go down. You can't put it really light. It's always going to be quite thick. So it's quite a nice way of practicing that, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I sketch a lot in ballpoint pen as well. The ballpoint you can create like fine lines and harsher lines. So it's much more, much messier. But yeah, I love, yeah, I usually, when I, I go through stages where I think, oh, I want to practice this or I want to practice that. And then I focus on something specific for a little while, not necessarily on one medium. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, on something specific. Yeah. yeah. I give myself briefs no, as well. I don't know if you do that. So I think, I make up an imaginary client who asks me for um, a commission and then I'm going to execute that as if I would do it for a client and I find that a lot of fun to do. Have you ever done that? Mm, that's a really interesting one. Oh, I've not done that before. That's an interesting idea, that. Um, so I do that quite often because it's a really good way of sort of, well, also creating portfolio work that you can then, you know, add to your website, for example. Um, and I would just say, like, say, for example, one of the clients I would like to work with is Lush, which is, I'm sure you know it. It's a, this British yeah. um, soap company. Uh, there are people watching this from America, so I don't know if Lush is international, but it's, it's definitely quite big here in the UK. And they create lots of beautiful soaps. So they're not sponsoring this, but if they wanted yeah. to, I'd be very happy to take their sponsorship. <laughs> And um, yeah, so that's a company that I would love to work with. And I think they always have really beautiful designs on their packaging. So then I come up yeah. with, I sort of imagine that they commission me to create a pattern uh, for a specific line. And then I'm going to make that. And I do find it, uh, yeah, sometimes it's just a little bit different than picking a photo and, uh, and copying a photo. It's, it's, it it's creates a slightly different way of thinking. I, I like that. Yeah. No, I saw a Lush in UAE, so I presume that there's some in America. Um, not sure. Just slowly adding a bit of that out to these. Um, I also find it interesting that you said in the beginning that you find gouache difficult because I think a lot of people find painting with gouache much easier than painting with watercolors. Yeah, I I don't know what it is. I think it might be because I'm coming from watercolor. I just find it it's like I find it the most difficult medium, but it's also one that I still really want to learn. And I do have gouache, and I don't know. Sometimes I like it. Like I did quite a lot of gouache for March of Robots because. Uh, the paper I was using just didn't handle watercolour very well, mm. and gouache is a forgiving medium. Like, it doesn't matter so much what sketchbook you're using, it will generally work. 
And because I couldn't really use watercolour on the paper, I ended up using a lot of gouache. But I just feel like I always have that moment when I use gouache where it just goes really poorly. Like I'll do a couple of paintings and it'll be like, yes, it's going really well. And then I do another one and it just goes horrifically. I just can't really get the hang of it. Hmm. It's um, it's interesting. I think gouache for me always works really well for landscapes. I love making gouache landscapes. Um, I think gouache portraits always I uh, find it really hard because when you yeah. do watercolor portraits, you can create almost like you know how skin is sometimes a bit see-through where you you know have different colors sort of when you layer it, and then watercolor works really well for that to have like a little bit of a glow. Mm. Like what you're doing now with the yellow and with the dark colors, you can add like soft shadows and stuff. With gouache, everything is quite intense. So I find that quite hard for portraits. But yeah, for landscapes, for example, I always think it works really well. Um, I think I've done a few landscapes before. But yeah, I don't know what it is. I think it's to do with the layering. I just, it's hard to know when it dries as well, I think, with gouache. Um, yeah. It's when, when the shine is away. That's what I, what I sort of usually base it on. As long as it's shiny, it's wet, and then when it gets that sort of matte look, that's uh, when it's dry enough to paint over. Yeah. I don't know. I know a lot of people say they find watercolour hard, though, and I hmm. don't really struggle so much with watercolour. I think it's, it's really different for everyone, really, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Um... I also I love it when watercolors sort of blur out together and when you have blooms and when you've got like what you have now with these goldfish, I don't know so when they're goldfish, but you have that sort of that where the, the orange and the blue sort of mixes up a bit. I love that. I think that is so beautiful. I, and that's something that is really typical for watercolor, isn't it? Where you mix the colours up that way. Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah, it wasn't really planned. <laughs> no, but that's the beautiful this thing about bit. watercolor is that you have these like little accidents that are often like I love them the most beautiful parts of the texture That's all I, have I do think about. you can get some really lovely textures as well hmm. have you used salt much with watercolor uh yeah yeah and then I have some granulation medium as well that I like using um yeah I use salt quite a lot I don't tend to use masking fluids very often I find masking fluids very um frustrating because then you, you have to be so precise and you have to take it all away afterwards and not leave it on too long and now i just rather go back in with a bit of white gouache and just put the highlights back in if i want to have something white yeah how about you um yeah masking fluid doesn't work on this paper i really like the paper but i feel like if you have really delicate paper sometimes it just doesn't work like i can't use masking tape on this paper either Hmm. Um, is but the I've used salt, salt before. Yeah, this one's handmade. Because yeah, I know you said the book is, but the paper itself is handmade as well. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's really interesting paper to use. It just doesn't really handle. Um, well, even salt, it doesn't really handle very well. It's a really lovely paper, but it does rip quite easily. Hmm. Even like if I use pencil on it, when I did the sketches yesterday, it just can rip really easily, which, yeah. I I have a book like this. Let me quickly grab it. Back in a sec. I think it's a little bit similar. So I have an, a sketchbook that I bought in India a few years ago. Mm. Um, and I think it's like similar paper. So it's quite thin, but it's really... I've never tried it for watercolors. Maybe I should try it. Um, but what I use it yeah. for is um, with ballpoint pen. That's sort of the only the only medium that really works on it. I think a little bit of color, a little bit of color pencil, which doesn't really stick, and a ballpoint pen. Um, yeah, maybe now I see you paint on sort of similar paper. Maybe I should give that try. Although I think your paper might be a bit thicker than this. This is this is a bit. Thicker. Yeah. Well, this one isn't. This one's a hundred GSM, so it's not super thick. Um, I did accidentally rip it a little bit last night, but yeah, this one's also made in India, so hmm. be quite similar. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I love trying different papers. And, uh, yeah, I bought a lot of sketchbooks lately. Yeah, <laughs> I um, I don't know about you, but I buy quite a lot from Jackson's, and they have so many sales, don't they? Hmm. 
So I ended up splurging on quite a lot. Do you use different sketchbooks for different um, for different mediums or different practices? Um, yeah, but because I don't really do much. Like I have oil pastels, but I don't really like them. I find them quite messy. Um, and I don't really do acrylic too much. I only really focus on like having one that can handle watercolor and one that can handle pen hmm. or pencil. Um, so I only really go for two types, but I do like going for a different sketchbook every time. I like to try out different brands and see what I like. I don't like rarely I've gone for the same sketchbook. This is my second Cardi, and I've had two of, like, Etcher and the Strathmore 500s, but generally I do like trying out different brands, really. Hmm. Um, I um, I recently bought my first Strathmore sketchbook. I've only done one page in it, um, and I am mm -hmm. really enjoying it so far, but I like using alcohol markers, and alcohol markers always go through the paper. I've not had one sketchbook where I could use it on where... The paper was thick enough to uh, not bleed through at all. Um, so mm. I didn't use loose paper for that. But it would be nice to have a sketch because I thought this was mixed media. But oh, maybe that's good for alcohol markers. But I think it probably will bleed through there as well. Um, is it the Strathmore 500? Um, it is. I don't really know. I have the I have the wrapper here so it's still somewhere. Uh, it is Stratmore five hundred. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good sketchbook that one. The um, and uh, I know you did a review of the um, what's it called? This this little one. I was also mm -hmm. surprised how small it was when uh, when I bought it. <laughs> I oh, sorry, when you did the review. The, the moleskin. It's so much smaller than I thought it was. But I really enjoyed taking it with me when yeah. I go somewhere because it fits in your pocket really, really nice. But yeah, so I recently finished that one and then I bought a new uh, small sketchbook. But this is Sea White of Brighton, which is a little bit cheaper than that. Um, I think I also. have one of those, but mine's spiral bound. Hmm. But yeah, I think I have a Sea White. Yeah. Do you prefer... Um, spiral bound books i hadn't really tried them until recently but i mean i think it's it's a little bit annoying if you're doing a spread like this because obviously your hand goes on top of it and it's mm. really difficult to kind of go around but i do quite like um using it for plein air because the page just folds over really easily mm. so i do quite like it for plein air if you're only doing one side but it's really difficult doing a spread i found mm. I am. Um, I've never bought an um, a circle band sketchbook. I am. Um, I don't really like them to write in. So, like for for note taking. Mm. So, yeah, I've never really considered buying one. But there might be benefits to them. Yeah, I mean, I think the only benefit really is um, that it opens flat. Mm. I know a lot of people don't really like them, but I thought I thought it was all right to be honest. It's just a little bit annoying. I'm trying to go on the other side because your hand's over like the big spiral bit. Hmm. But they're quite interesting to try out. I only ended up getting it because they had it was sea white. They had the um a actual like plein air sketchbook, hmm. and I wanted to give that a try and see how it was different to another sketchbook, really. So I ended up getting that one. Hmm. The um. Art materials are like this rabbit hole, isn't it? That it's really easy to, uh, yeah, to to buy more art materials all the time. I think it can be a little bit addictive. I, I'm always very tempted mm. to buy art material. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of stopped myself a little bit lately because I don't know. I like making my own palette. That's one of the things. So once I've got a set number of paints, it's like right, I've made the palette, and because I don't really like um half pan palettes i'd much rather have them put into a palette like this one mm -hmm. i sort of stopped myself buying more paints because they're all full up there's nowhere for any more to go but when it comes to sketchbook i do buy quite a lot of sketchbooks but i just don't want to run out you know mm -hmm. do you um, use a mix of different brand paints uh, in your palette at the moment or how do you select the colors? yeah i have 
quite a lot really um i i really like daniel smith but i found that they're really good for landscapes but not so much for portraits because they're so granulating i just find but i so still really like winter and newton i think the daniel smith paints are wonderful but they're just so expensive this yeah especially here and because Windsor and Newton is cheaper here, I don't. I think they're kind of equal to Windsor and Newton, really. Really, to be honest, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I have. I got them from my granddad. I have some really old Windsor and Newton Cotmans, like hmm. about thirty, forty years old, maybe more. And um, the formula of those old ones is nothing like the formula of Cotmans now. You think they got better? so much better. Hmm. Yeah, the the old ones are like Daniel Smith quality, hmm. and the new Cotmans, they are a lot worse. Hmm. You know, I think the artist grade ones are probably a lot closer than like to vintage Cotmans, but the current Cotman formula, yeah, I don't find it to be very good, and it does break apart a lot in my palette. Like hmm. I've got so many random blobs of paint that's just kind of fallen everywhere. That seems hmm. to be what happens in the new one. Yeah, I am. Um, I have a little travel set of Cotman paints that I do use when I go on holiday mostly, or I've I've used them for YouTube videos and stuff as well. I've actually got one set here, um, and I think I think they're all right. Yeah. They're very cheap. They're only like I think a box like this is only like ten or twelve pounds, maybe, which maybe is a lot of money yeah. for some people. But for relatively good watercolor paints, I think is quite cheap. Um, mm. and I um, yeah, I do like using them. But I have another set of paints that is an unbranded set that I, I don't know, I've had it for years. It was maybe only two pounds or something for the set, and it's just as good. <laughs> And um, mm. yeah, sometimes you don't know. You can be really like pleasantly surprised by art materials, or um, be really unlucky with something that you spend a lot of money on. And it all depends on what you want to use it for as well. I think. Yeah. Well, my first Daniel Smith was Moon Glow, which I'd heard everyone talk about, and I thought it was going to be really good. And I was actually really disappointed by it. Mm. It's a lovely shade, but it just wasn't. What I was expecting, like I'd heard people say it was a really nice purple because it's made of red, blue and green. Hmm. And I'd heard people say it's a really lovely purple. You can use in shadows, landscapes, portraits, everything. And I just couldn't really find a way to use it that I liked. So I was quite disappointed by that one. I don't, it's also quite possible that in a few years time, for some reason, you pick that up again and then you fall in love with it because suddenly it fits in with what you want to do. That really does happen sometimes. Do you think, oh, yeah, you know, completely. It clicks and this is what I needed to use it for, or this is how it how it works really well. Do you want yeah, to? Yeah, I've had that. Oh, so you go first. Sorry. <laughs> I was, I had that with some sketchbooks before where I've put them down and then picked them up and they've been a bit better, like later on hmm. do you want to talk me through what you're making because i know we are we decided together to join an art challenge which is called our planet week which is actually um well depends on when i actually publish this video it's uh, I'll, I'll see if i can publish it in the week that our planet week is because that would actually be really nice for them um yeah yeah so the, that's the end of this month and they the prompts have been Release. Let me quickly check. Let them hear. Um, yeah, so the prompts are ecosystem, atmosphere, reconnect, together, and habitat. And I wanted to do ecosystem. I just thought I'll start with the first one. And I was planning to do like an, you know, like the infinity sign where you have um, like, uh, like, yeah. like an eight basically. I thought I'm going to do two otters that are swimming in that shape, which, as you can see, mm -hmm. completely went out of the window once I started sketching. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was my idea. But I've only focused on one prompt because I, uh, I thought doing all five is a bit overwhelming. And uh, what are you doing? What, what, is your, um, what was your interpretation of this, uh, of this challenge? Um, so yeah, I mean, the prompts are really interesting. I thought some of them were really quite similar to each other 
So the prompts were ecosystem, atmosphere, reconnect together and habitat for this small little page, which to be honest, I'm actually really surprised how long it's taken for it each piece to dry as you'll see but for the first one I did ecosystem I did like a forest in like a little potion I just thought that'd be quite cute um for atmosphere I had the idea of doing like an earth but turning it into just the sea and having like fish sort of out here swimming about and then I was going to pop stars over here so it's like stars but it was kind of the idea I had but it's kind of blended together because this paper is you know, staying wet for ages, unfortunately. Um, for Reconnect, I just wanted to do a simple face, to be honest. I just like painting faces. And mm -hmm. the girl's kind of like holding, instead of a telephone, she's holding a flower. And I thought that would just be kind of cute. But that one's got a few more layers to go. Mm -hmm. For Together, I just wanted to do a cute little tiger and a deer. Just kind of like a predator-prey thing. Just I thought that'd be kind of cute. Yeah. And then for Habitat, I had a similar idea to your circle one. Um, and I just had the idea of doing like a whale and a frog sort of make, turning into a circle together. I don't know if you can see with the light. I saw the frog, but, but I couldn't really see the wheel because of the sunlight. But now I see, now I realise what that is. I thought it was a frog sitting. Yeah, it's well. kind of. Ah, now I can see it. Yeah, yeah so it's oh, kind of round. Yeah. Just had a few ideas. Yeah. Do you, um, I don't know. I quite, I quite like doing lots of little things when it comes to challenges. Hmm. When you, when you join an art challenge and you see a prompt list, how do you approach it? How do you go about? Um, yeah, where do you get started when you see something like that and you think, um, oh, I want to join this art challenge? I first, I think of like generally, I go with my gut. Like the very first thing I'll think of. So when I saw ecosystem, I thought of a forest. Um, and then I'll go on Pinterest and see if I can get different ideas, try and merge things together. That's kind of what I do. But a lot of the time, if I see a prompt, I go with the first thing that pops in my head because otherwise I will talk myself out of it. And mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll like think too much about what to do and trying to make it look amazing. So I generally go for the first thing that is in my head. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do for mermaid because they're all mermaids. I think it's going to be a bit more difficult to make them look different. Mm -hmm. Um. Are they? Uh, I, I've never joined Mermaid. I've I've looked at it before, but I'm not that crazy about mermaids that I wanted to paint thirty of them. But I thought, oh, maybe I'll do like one or two, just dip in a little bit. But the um, the prompts are very like you could almost make like a children's book sort of with the different prompts. Could you like have one character yeah. and do? I think some people are doing that and uh, having that character in different mm -hmm. settings depending on the prompt. Yeah. And, and, the prompts are out already they're quite interesting but some of them are very specific hmm. um but yeah there's star wars day there's like a few really interesting ones they've got self-portrait as well which would be quite interesting hmm. paint yourselves in mermaids yeah that'd be fun but yeah i find yeah. self-portraits really hard i've done a few over the years but i don't know if you can find them anywhere because they weren't very good <laughs> <laughs> yeah fun. I've done one I wasn't I wasn't a big fan of the experience hmm. the um what I do sometimes if um for an art challenge is just make little thumbnails first so I have a bit of an idea of the sketch before I do them on uh on like my final paper or something like that but there we go. um but the uh what I always try and do is not look at anyone else's artwork before I finish mine. Because, for example, yeah, Inktober is a big one that I've always sort of joined in the past. Um, and there's so many amazing artists out there that once I start to look at what they are creating for a certain prompt, then I, I feel like your ideas get colored by what you see other people do. So I try not to do that and just come up with my own idea before I look at anything. Um, yeah, I had similar for Inktober because that was my first Inktober I did and I recorded everything for YouTube and TikTok and I there was a lot of them where what was it? There was like crabby and a lot of the a lot of people were taking it as an emotion, a feeling, mm -hmm. and I drew a crab. <laughs> and there was a lot of them like that where it's kinda like, I'm glad I started like a week earlier mm -hmm. because by that point it's like I've already done it. It doesn't matter. Like, move on. But then I did look at other people's afterwards and think, oh, I probably could have done that. Why didn't I take it as that? And, like, sometimes with my prompts, I take them a bit too literal, whereas a lot of people can go into 
lots of different feelings and make it surreal. And I'm just like, this is crabby. I'm drawing a crab. <laughs> I take it very literal. Yeah. I don't. I I don't think there's anything wrong with it because there's no rule saying you need to make it really that complicated for yourself. I think. Yeah, taking it literal is absolutely fine, I think. And then you can still create amazing art by, like, for example, I remember a few years ago, one of the prompts was tiger. There's nothing wrong with just drawing a tiger. Like, you don't have to think about, oh, someone who is tigering on the floor and then <laughs> going back, yeah, and making it extra complicated. Sometimes just uh, literal is absolutely fine, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think it's amazing, it? like... Exactly. I think it's amazing what some people can come up with, but mm. I, yeah, I generally just go to the first thing that's in my head, really. Yeah. I do think you can learn quite a lot from joining an art challenge, like doing a specific medium or like how to interpret, interpret it prompts and see what other people are doing. Yeah. Um, actually, mm. one that you might really like is um, it's a Dutch illustrator, which she hosts the prompt in uh, English. And it's an Every it's called like drawing hour, and every week she posts a video, a photo, and everyone makes a drawing of that video, of that photo, and it's uh, usually a person doing something. She picks really interesting. I'll send it to you. She picks really interesting uh, poses and really interesting photos to draw from. Yeah, uh, yeah I think you'll really like it. I'll send it to you. Uh, I'll put it in the link. Yeah, that's really the cool. Yeah, as well. Are you um are you almost finished with your artwork, or is there a lot that you want to do? Um, yeah. I think so. This is <laughs> this one here has taken a long while to dry, so I think I'm gonna have to let that fully dry before I can try and add something to it, add an eye and stuff. Um, this needs a little bit more as well, but yeah, watercolor. So <laughs> gotta make sure it's all fully dry, really. I am. Um, I actually realized that I have heard of this brand of this brand because when you said it's Indian, I thought suddenly I realized, oh, it's Kadi with a K, isn't it? And um, yeah. I uh, I think the type of paper is almost because it's so sort of naturally natural fabrics. I think it sort of blurs out really quickly, almost like not like kitchen roll, but like if you drop something on it, it sort of blows out really quick, doesn't it? Interesting. Yeah. Well, I have the I have the smaller one that's like hard. Um, and that one I think is two hundred and seventy GSM, and this one is it's like a lot thinner but this one is the fat book and it was actually really good you get like mm. it's a lot of pages for about 10 pound mm. yeah so it's lovely. really good i think yeah really nice yeah i look forward to seeing that fill up um yeah it'd be wonderful i love seeing a full sketch yeah. which is so much fun isn't it yeah i finished quite a few sketchbooks now actually yeah awesome um are if people want to find you and follow you and you, where where can people find you if they want to know a little bit more about what you do and what your videos? Yeah, um, I'm just Chantal Arts on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Really, they're my mains. I do also have Pinterest, but it's more me looking for inspiration than me actually mm -hmm. saving things. Um, and do you have a website or not yet? Yeah, um, chantelarts.com. I have some originals on there, but at the moment it's more building my portfolio and building my socials. So I have like five originals on there at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm not on a Squarespace or anything that has where I can like post 500 things on there if I wanted. You know, I'm kind of limited at the moment to just five posts. I've just okay. got five on there. Fantastic. Well, I'll make sure that I'll link all of that underneath. And um yeah, thank you so much for joining. I really enjoyed it. Really, I think just painting together and talking together and spending time with another artist is so much fun. And I really love doing that. So thank you so much for being my guest today.